in the inner man. In the inner man. Just place your hand on your heart this morning. Lord, I pray for the church here today. May the power of God so strengthen you today that you permanently abide in him. Hallelujah. That they may have an encounter with you that they've never had before. That love would come to take up residency in you, never to leave in Jesus' name. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Hallelujah. This is what Paul's praying. And he's not done. Look at the next verse, verse 18. That you, being rooted and grounded in love. Isn't that talking about abiding now? Isn't that talking about dwelling? That you may be rooted and grounded in love and may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. He's talking about the love of God, isn't he? Now circle that word comprehend, very important. It doesn't mean to understand. That's what comprehend means in English, right? It's not what it means. It's a, it's a Greek word with two words put together. The first word is this word kata again. So it's talking about something that's dominating and subjugating and controlling that comes upon you. And then the second part of the word is the Greek word lambano, which means to seize or grab a hold of. You know, you can place something in your hand, but if you haven't grabbed a hold of it, someone can take it away from you real quickly. Has that ever happened to you? Years ago, we went camping. I remember when my oldest son and I went on a hike up in the mountains. The hills are alive with the sound. You know, it was a beautiful place. Tree. We, we found a place where there was no trail. All the guys like it, amen? So we were there, and we, we, we found a rock to sit on, and we thought we would have our lunch together, man to son, you know, macho to macho. It was a great time, and so we got everything out that my beloved bride prepared for us, sandwiches and chips and all the goodies for a picnic. And my son naively just put the sandwich in his hand like that. And within three seconds, a giant bird swooped down out of the trees, grabbed the sandwich, and took off. And what began as a glorious day turned out to be a very disappointing day for him. See, he hadn't taken hold of that sandwich because he thought, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. God wants you to comprehend his love. We see the same word used in John 1, 5. Remember where it says, and the darkness... Light shines in the darkness, but the darkness can't comprehend it. Remember that verse? John was writing and he was saying, the darkness can, can't grab a hold of light. Darkness can't stop the light of God from coming. See, darkness doesn't have the ability to hold the light under its control. But the believer... How many are believers this morning? But the believer, the one who's strengthened by faith, those abiding in God. See, when faith is working in you, faith grabs a hold. Faith grabs a hold. Hallelujah. You have a confidence. You have a strength. And this faith will grab a hold of God's love. Never to let go. You'll grab a hold of God's power by faith. You'll comprehend the things of God. Amen. Faith overrides and supersedes everything and anything that may stand in its way. Hallelujah. Faith will not take no for an answer. And Paul was praying this for the church, that you grab a hold of the love of God and never let go. Why? Because love never fails. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands and thank God for the, for the love of God? Say, Lord... This morning, I believe God. I'm grabbing a hold of the love of God. And I will not let go. In Jesus' name.
could stop right now, but I got one more thing I want to say to you, and that that's this. Faith works. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? James, you remember James? Faith without works is what? Dead, yeah. Faith always works. Faith will always work for you. I don't believe that. But faith works differently than we think. I can tell you're thinking really hard. But it does work. Turn to your neighbor and say, faith works. <laughs> faith will always work for you. Human effort has nothing to do with faith. Human works and the work of faith are two completely different things. God always works by faith. And when God is working, it makes no sense to the natural world. Most people think in the world today that things are getting worse, but God is working by faith. Can you see it? It makes no sense to the natural mind. This natural world will never comprehend it. Your carnal mind, church, has nothing to do with the faith of God. Faith's way of doing things will be strangely different. That's why you are becoming a peculiar people. The more you walk by faith, you're just strange. And you're really different. But you're abiding in the love of God. And sometimes when faith is operating, it may seem amazing. It will look impossible. Have you ever been there? Think of the great men and women of faith. By faith, Sarah conceived after she was no longer able to conceive. That's the way God did it. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell in after the nation of Israel just walked around the walls for seven days. And on the seventh day, they walked around it seven times. That makes no sense. What a waste of time. Say faith. Faith does supernatural things. And this morning, I just want to look at one obscure verse that we typically glance over as we study the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. But please turn to Hebrews 11. Just look at verse 33 for just a moment. Then we're going to pray. Faith subdued ki kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. These are things that faith did, not human ability. And typically what I do when I read this portion of Scripture, I try to figure out which guy it was that did that. Have you ever done that? Stopping the mouths of life. Oh, that's Daniel. Yeah. And we miss the whole point. God wants to know, tell you this morning, Paul's praying for the church. There's an operation of faith for your life. And it will be different than everyone else. Hallelujah. There's a work in each of you, and it's a different work. But I, I got to tell you this morning, faith works. Come on, church. Look at these. Just come. Faith, faith subdues kingdoms. See, in the world, we use armies and sanctions, military and economic might, right, to subdue a kingdom. We see it all over the world, right? But you can also subdue a kingdom by faith. 
Oh, how does that work? How about that? Work righteousness. By faith, you're not trying to be spiritual when you're walking by faith. How do you know that? By faith in Him, you can effortlessly, effortlessly cause righteousness to work by believing God. Wow. How about the next one, uh, obtained promises? Faith obtains promises. We want the promise to manifest, amen? Whatever it may There's no peace in our life until it manifests. But Jesus said, remember in Mark 11, Jesus said, believe that you already have received the promise with no doubt in your heart. And then it'll manifest just like you prayed. So the promises of God you obtain by faith. Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. Next one, right? Was he trying to protect himself? No. By faith, the lions became his friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You getting this? Faith quenches the fire. How does that work? Faith will escape the sword. Hmm. Faith will demonstrate God's strength through weakness. Can you see that one? Where is it? Out of weakness, we're made strong. That word made means to create something out of nothing. Amen? Think about this, guys. We want to get rid of our weakness. That's what we get upset with, right? (laughs) But God doesn't want to remove your weakness. God wants to flow through your weakness. God told Paul, the thing that you're embarrassed about, the thing you're tired about, I want to use it. So his strength can be seen through your weakness by faith. So God's strength comes to you by faith through his spirit into your inner man. Has nothing to do with your weakness, does it? Has nothing to do with your personality. Has nothing to do. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Is this helping anyone here today? See, faith can do a whole lot more than you realize. Became valiant in battle. You might train to be a Navy SEAL, but you're valiant by faith in battle. How many know we're in a battle today? Time for the church to rise and be valiant. Faith will turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Outnumbered a million to one. See, faith uses different weapons, doesn't he? Remember Gideon? Gideon won his battle with trumpets and torches. And the hordes of the alien army fled. You overcome by faith. Turn to someone, look them in the eye, say, I overcome by faith. And there's a work of faith in each of you today, and it's not going to be the same. It's not supposed to be the same. And for just a moment here, I want us to look at that very first one, faith subdued kingdoms. How does faith subdue a kingdom? A great example of this we find in the story of Daniel, chapter 2 of Daniel. Let me give you a little background. Nebuchadnezzar had conquered the entire world. Amen? Babylon was the ruling kingdom. They had overthrown Judah and Jerusalem. Amen? And Daniel, along with Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, were taken into captivity As slaves, say slaves, to serve the king of Babylon, the kingdom of Babylon. 
Nebuchadnezzar was the king. Daniel was just a slave. The king had a dream that so bothered him he could not sleep at night. He knew he had a dream from God. And he wanted to know what it meant because the dream kept coming back. So he asked all of the wise men, and Daniel passed all the tests and the training, so he was included in this group. He asked all the the soothsayers and astrologers. He said, listen, guys, I want to have the interpretation of this dream, but I want you to do it this way for me. I want you to tell me what the dream is first and then interpret it for me because then I know that I can trust your answer. How many know in the realm of politics there's a lot of liars? <laughs> and all of the astrologers and all the soothsayers, they said, it's impossible. Say impossible. And then they said, only the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh can do this. Nebuchadnezzar got upset. He was angry. And in verse 12, chapter 2, Daniel 12, 2, for this reason the king was angry and very furious and gave the command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree went out and they began killing the wise men. And they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. This was not a good day. Jump down to verse 17. It says, so then Daniel went to his house and made the decision, the decree from the king. He made it known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Those are the three Hebrew children that later got thrown into the fiery furnace, you know. These are four young men that learned the secret of abiding. And it says here uh, that that, that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret. Say secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. The day that we live in today, you need to know that God does not want you to perish from COVID-19. Doesn't matter what the decree is. You seek the Lord and you'll be fine. They were seeking the mercies of God, weren't they? Weren't they? What were they doing? They had a prayer meeting. They were praying God. They they were having an Acts chapter 2 day. They were abiding in him. They They were seeking the Lord. And notice in verse 19, it says, then. So this is directly related to their prayers. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. He had a dream. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. Do you understand what's happening today? God is changing the times and the seasons. Next verse. He removes kings. And raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise. And knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness. And light dwells with him. And here's a great, here's a great praise that you can pray all alone. In the very next verse, verse 23. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might. Circle that word might. And ha- have now made known to me what we asked of you. For you have made known to us the king's demand. What was happening here? Daniel believed God. Did he have any evidence that the dream given to him was the same dream given to the king? 
No. He just had a dream. Daniel believed God. What was going on? He was being strengthened with might in the inner man through faith. The same way that you and I are strengthened. How do we know he was walking by faith? Daniel called up King Nebuchadnezzar on his cell phone and made an appointment to meet with him. He didn't ask. He told him, I'm coming. Look in verse 26. It says, the king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, what you're going to hear, he spoke with great confidence and with great boldness. Say boldness. Look at verse 27. Look at this. (laughs) The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king. It is impossible. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed were these. And Daniel begins to speak with incredible detail every part every nuance of King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. We find the same dream in the book of Revelation, don't we? Look at, look, at what, look at what the king did. Look what he did. Verse 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face. He's the king. He represents God on the earth. And he fell on his face before Daniel and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. We, we present offerings to, to gods. We present if incense to ruling spirits, don't we, in that culture. Can you see what the king was doing? The king answered Daniel and said, Truly your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Since you could reveal the secret. Now look at the last verse, verse 48. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon. That would be Iraq today. And he also made him chief administrator. Say administrator. Over all the wise men of Babylon. The kingdom of Babylon was changed from that day forward. Babylon was subdued by faith. Daniel was now the one ruling the nation. Oh, I hope this is helping you today. He wasn't looking for it, but Daniel became the ruler of the province and the administrator over all of the wise men. And we see the wise men reappear, don't we, in in Matthew chapter 1 when they came seeking for the birth of the Messiah. Oh, my, 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 God is involved today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is still revealing secrets. And if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in you, he will continue to make alive your mortal bodies through his spirit by faith in the inner man. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you lift your hands? Thank God today. That's faith at work. That's faith at work. That's faith at work. Faith is abiding in you today. It's not in your own ability, church but in what God has already accomplished in Christ. Faith in Him releases all of His power, not some of His power. 
His power is going to work for you this morning by faith. So let's look at this. What does faith in Christ do? Faith gives, gives you access when there is no access. Faith strengthens you. Faith abides. Hallelujah. Faith will grab a hold. Hallelujah. Faith always works. But faith doesn't work through natural means. Faith works by love. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands with me? Close your eyes all over this house. His power comes through his spirit into your inner man to do miracles. We want God to do the miracle for us, but God wants his power to flow through you to do a miracle for the nation and for others. I want you to receive right now, right now, right now, whatever you may need from the Lord. Some of you are here today and you've not received and made Jesus Lord of your life. You need to surrender and quit pretending. You need to make that decision this morning. Some of you have never been clothed, have never been clothed with power. Why? Why not allow the Spirit of God to clothe you this morning? Let it become a reality. Some of you have uh, have never abided. You're, you're running out of that secret place for whatever reason. But God wants you to know how much He loves you today. And God wants you to dare to believe God this morning. Hallelujah. For, for miracles. Just quit striving. Just receive. It's that simple. God made it, made it effortlessly. Why? He accomplished all things for you in Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whatever you need today, whatever you are facing today, whatever you may be praying about today, I encourage you. I want you to believe God. Just make that shift in your thinking because faith will do something through you beyond what you can ask or think. And that miracle is already working in your heart today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift your hand and say with me, Lord, I receive by faith through your spirit in my inner man your strength, your wisdom, your understanding, your salvation, your power, your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you today that faith is working in my life in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is what I want us to do. I want you to prepare your offerings. I want you to stand to your feet. And as I said, if you've not surrendered to the Lord, this is a great day to do it. I just want you to come to the front, remain here, and our deacons and elders will pray with you. Jesus said, wait until you're clothed with power from on high. It's important. Paul prayed for the church. Wait, you need to be strengthened with might in the inner man. That has not yet happened for you. Why not today? Why not believe God today? Because he's already accomplished everything he needs to do to make it a reality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a great day. This is a great day. Hallelujah. We're going to sing and worship the Lord, and we're going to pronounce a blessing over each and every one of you. But I want you to stand to your feet, bring your offerings and your tithes to the front. All of you that are watching today, you can give online through our face, uh, through our, our, our um, website or, or our web page, uh, mygct.life, or you can use uh, the text to give option. So just everyone, I want each of you to give to the Lord uh, so that that favor of God will continue to rest on your your life. Uh, Pastor David, if you would be here, uh, 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 Pastor Jan, if you and your husband would come to stand on this side. We're going to believe God for miracles today. Amen. Amen. Uh, is this okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord.
your hands and receive from the Lord. Thank you for every person here today. Just lift your hands to the Lord. Through your spirit, right now, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, just say, Lord, I thank you today that the spirit of God is operating in my life. I receive, by faith, the blessing of heaven 
I receive by faith supernatural protection. I receive by faith supernatural provision. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus.